It is Dulcich again. We're going uh, to the Dulcich and we will talk to refugees to know about their problems, to offer help. I don't know uh, with the questions they have, with whatever about the rules, lawsuit, and yeah, we will offer them help. Mm -hmm. And there is too many people inside. They want to complain and they want to come here, but they're scared. They're frightened. This is why I'm here. I, I have lived 16 months in here and I have talked to many things. I have made many interviews and they tried to scare me too. Yeah. They will do the same to you. They saw that we are talking. They will come to you trying to. Yeah, if you talk, your, your, your asylum process will be fucked up. Just uh, it's for it's a lie. Yeah. It's not like that. You can tell the same to others. If you don't talk about your problems, if you don't complain, it means you're happy. They're fighting. They're yeah, fighting. it, it you shows that you're me. happy in here. You know what they told me? They told me if we come and talk to the camera and to the journalist, you're gonna keep to us one year more. It's bullshit. More a year. They, they are not the decision makers. They have, they just, they are... But just they make a reporter. They make a report. They, they do it, but... This guy is crazy, but this guy is speaking too much. But talking about bullshit, you're talking about your basic rights, you know? Yeah. You're talking about your basic, you, you're not insulting or offensing anyone, any political person. You're talking about your first basic rights. Yeah. No one can do anything wrong. You, you know. And they don't have the competence to decide how long you are going to stay here. This it's is Landesdirektion and it's a mind game, you know. I sent letter to the bar. I told them, I don't need money from you. I don't need anything from you. Just give me permission for work and for study. I will go by myself, find a job and work and pay for myself. I don't need money from the government. The thing I don't is, I want to make like be like the supporter of them. I don't to want them dependent. to support me. You, you want to be dependent. Yeah, yeah, just give me permission for work and study. I will do it all by myself. I didn't come here to this country. And have you ever t asked anyone about this? Have you talked to any officials? They here? laughing at me. I went to the Sashia. They laughing at me. They, they, laugh at they laughing at me. I told them why you laughing at me. They told me you are here six, seven months. And you start talking. Some people, they are one year and a half. And you have a fingerprint. She laughing at me. The she social. Make, yeah. She laughing at me. I was so angry that week. I went out. I took the train. I was so, so angry. When I come discussed something wrong, they laughing at me. You say you are seven months here. And you start talking. Making about, joke, huh? Yeah. Making fun of you. Mm. But the, the next social, they came and other people. They came, they are good. They told me just be patient. From this month until three, four months later, we're gonna give you transfer and we're gonna give you permission. This is what they tell, tell but, everyone. But I cannot stay here mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. The thing is, uh, the BAMF is not responsible for all of those decisions. It's uh, Landesdirektion. It's separate. It's, separate. it's not related to them. Mm -hmm. the, the rule makers are different from them. So whatever you're doing here, whatever they write, report, have no effect on it. They have no effect. Effect, no. Don't worry about all it. All right, I get you, yeah. Ibrahim. Yes. Yeah. So, Ibrahim, you just described the, the night that when you were thrown out of the camp. Can you do this? Yeah. Can we, you describe it again? Yeah, we been in, in the winter time. Mm -hmm. One of the guy inside the room, maybe he lights a cigarette or something. So the, the fire goes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they come the police, and they come the ambulance, and they come everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After when they come, they kicking us out two hours. Yeah. All the building. How many people were uh, thrown out? It's How about many? like uh, 35, 40, 40 person. People, all the inhabitants of one building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you said that they were um, also insulting you? Yeah. He insulted me. One, mm -hmm. one security, he insulted me. He's probably about 50 years old. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have hair. And he's a little bit racist. I can see from his eyes. He's mm -hmm. shouting. And he knocked at the door. Get out! Get out! Mm -hmm. Only one security. The rest of security, they being treated me very good. Yeah. Except this guy. I can see from his eyes, he doesn't like anyone. Okay. Uh, and 
you labeled it in a certain way before, like because many people were affected, but only one person smoked inside the room. Yeah, if if someone does does mistake, they yeah. have the information. Yeah. Which room is being smoking or mm -hmm. being doing a fire or something? So yeah. why it does that they don't punch punch him by themselves? Yeah. They punch everybody. Yeah. It's an army rule. Collective punishment. A collective yeah. punishment. Yeah. That's yeah. wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. And they come at night. Three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and they don't just knock the door. And how long did you have to stay out here? Two hours. Two hours, and it was in the middle of the night and it was freezing. In the middle of the night, it was so, so freezing. Mm -hmm. One of the Morocco guys, they kick him out for four hours. So, so what do you do with the, here in the middle of the night outside for two hours? What do you, you just? You have to walk in, walk in, walk in around like a uh, to mad, stay warm, like a mad person. Yeah. If somebody ta uh, saw me over there with the camera. He, he thought like I'm, I'm gonna steal or do something wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Mark, I think it was good. Yeah. Uh, I just hope that. Um Ibrahim actually will start organizing, right, people? Uh, you see how scared he was, you he know. Is, but he was brave enough to speak uh, to the camera, was, right? Yeah, he was brave enough and I liked it and I will, yeah. yeah. We will work together. Yeah, he's a real fighter and he was talking in a good way, you know, not uh, about some unimportant things. Yeah. Uh, over about human rights and and showing that there is no human right in here, there is nothing about humanity in this camp. <laughs> yeah, it's really disaster. I think he made it clear in a very good point, like they want us to be, they kind of push us into criminality and they want this camp also that they are that we deal here with drugs and that um, stuff like this goes because this so they can create this image of the um, criminal foreigner who has to be, be put into such a camp, right? Like, and who has to be exposed to those um, repressive regulations. Yeah, this is somehow for me, it's kind of plan of government dealing with refugees in this way. I yeah, don't know. Please, the system, yeah, systematic outcome. Putting the them into know. illegal things, black market marketing, I don't know, black jobs, dealing stuff, illegal stuff, yeah. you know. So if they don't do this, what else they can do? They don't let them to go to school. They don't let them to work. So how can people survive with 30 euro each week that even it's not enough to go to the city and come back? You know, five days, if you want to take five days bus to the city and come back, yeah. it will be 35 euro for five days. They are paying to the lawyers. They are paying for clothing, for food for internet, for their personal things, how possibly they can manage it, you know? Yeah. For such a long time, two years, mm -hmm. it can make anyone crazy, no yeah. matter how strong you are. And what do you think, um, how many people actually plan going or leaving Germany, going to France, to England, and how many do this actually? You know, I was talking to some friends in Calais two days ago mm -hmm. and he was from Germany, he left Germany about two weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And he was telling Mohsen, Calais is full of refugees from Germany. Yeah. And he was shocked, you know, and what is behind it? This suppression, mm -hmm. this inhuman things that are happening to them. So how can they tolerate it? They, in one point, they just give up. They come, they become totally frustrated and they say, okay, let's try our chance in another fucking country. Um, but there, like you said it yourself, like um, that in England there's the same shit going on. It uh, is. Was, were your words. Um, so what's the hope then um, to just move to another country in Europe? The hope. The hope. Uh, there is no hope in it. They just you want know. to try another thing. Maybe it could be better. Maybe, just you know, they are just yeah. fed up in here. They have been frustrated with many inhuman, insane things. And you will see more. Right now, no one is talking. We just could talk to two people. 
but uh, yeah, Jay will talk little by little, and then you will understand how shitty the situation is in the camp.